Christian for over 28 years talking about things that matter with people who care. Production of McQuistian is made possible in part by individual viewers, supporters of the Foundation for Responsible Television, the Hatton W. Sumner's Foundation, helping to educate the public about the fundamental principles of their democracy and thus be in a position to help formulate public policy. Moss Adams LLP, certified public accountants and consultants, providing industry smart tax, assurance, and consulting solutions to help businesses and their owners succeed since 1913. The University of Texas at Dallas, creating the future. One reads about deaths caused by guns every day in the newspaper and sees the carnage on television. But whether we truly understand the causes and the scope of the problem is another matter. We'll look at possible solutions on another program, but on this program we'll specifically examine just how large the problem is, show you how much of it is suicide versus homicide, and we'll examine some of the causes of the problem. So let's meet our experts. Starting uh, in Washington, D.C., joining us by phone is Larry Pratt. He's executive director emeritus of the Washington, D.C.-based Gun Owners of America. Now, Larry, I'll come back to you in a minute, but I am emeritus on a board myself, and I think that means that we've served for a long time, but it may be just a synonym for old. Is that true? Uh, I thought it was more the gray hair, but take it as you will. <laughs> All right, good. Thank you for joining us. Here in the studio, Vika Chaplin is the director of public health programs at the Educational Fund to Stop Gun Violence. They're a firearms policy think tank where she works to develop, advocate for, and implement evidence-based firearms policies and programs. She has a master's degree in public health and counseling psychology and applies a risk-based approach to gun violence prevention. Vika, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. Great. And sitting next to you is Judy Cook. She's a psychiatrist, author, and speaker with 40 years of experience dealing with challenging mental health issues that interfere with the whole quality of life. She knows how important it is to develop new skills and approaches to help people and society resolve their problems. So, Judy, welcome to the program. Thank you. Let's talk, if you don't mind, to start with about these mental factors that contribute to some of these mass shootings. You know, there's a tendency to want to say these mass shootings are caused by mental illness, and that's simply not the fact. It's a very, very small percentage of people with diagnosed mental illness. Are there people who are mean people, people who are going off or whatever? I think we want to really look at a very important aspect of this violence, and that is look at those mass shootings like the canary in the coal mine. It's signaling that there's something else going on that's worse. Because we have, I think in 2016, 36,000 gun-related deaths. 60% of those were suicide, not homicide by some stranger. And another significant percentage was domestic violence, people we knew, or accidents within the home, or kids that found that gun that you didn't secure safely, and issues of that nature. So the percentage in these issues that get all the attention is really very small. But I think we need to be smart and take advantage of the lesson we're learning and do something okay, that's about That's a good point. Let's look at one of the graphics that Vika sent, graphic seven. And graphic seven talks about uh, what you just mentioned now. We, we have uh, had these 30, low 30 uh, firearm deaths and peaked up there in 19, excuse me, 2016 to about 38,000. We'll talk about why that may be the case in a minute. And let's look at graphic number eight as well, and we'll see how those firearm deaths are broken down in Texas. And you can see again a significant increase, probably the same percentage or so in Texas. And then while we're doing that, let's look at graphic number nine, which is this gun violence by intent that you're talking about. So the percentage in the United States and Texas is about the same, about 60% suicide. Uh, we got homicide and then some other uh, issues there. So, Vika, let me just come to you and ask you about this issue. I mean, it does seem that we want to focus on these mass shootings. 
while suicide is becoming a bigger a problem, um, uh, has always been a bigger mm -hmm. part of the equation to start with. Uh, when you guys look at this, so to tell that viewer what your organization is, tell you a little bit more about it, and then how you come up with these statistics and what you're trying to do here. Absolutely. So we hear about the mass shootings on the news. That's they're they're big, they're awful, they're tragic, and the whole nation hears about them. But we often don't hear about the the individual shootings that happen every single day and make up the the bulk of gun violence in this country. So I work at the Educational Fund to Stop Gun Violence, and we're a firearms policy think tank. So what we do is work with researchers, advocates, and legislators to, to develop evidence-based policy. And that's important because that way research is backing it up, and that's how we know that uh, they'll be effective. Okay, so we got all these numbers. In your estimation, what are the top two or three reasons why this is happening? What are the causes? Well, the reality is that when, more, when there are more guns, there are more gun deaths. So easy access to firearms by people who are either dangerous or in some sort of crisis, that leads to more gun deaths. And that, um, the trend that you saw these last few years of 38,000 deaths in America in, due to firearms in 2016, that's not even the whole problem because there are a lot of non-fatal injuries as well. So those numbers just came out, and you asked where the numbers are all coming from. These are all coming from the CDC. And so the CDC The CDC that. stands for? The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And just, I think, two weeks ago, they released the 2016 non-fatal injury data. And so in 2016, across the country, 116,000 people were shot and survived. And so what that means, I mean, these are big numbers. It's hard to gauge that. What it means is that every single day of that year, about 420 people were shot, and 105 of them did not survive those injuries. Every single day. Every day. Uh, I'm not wanting to think about that, but thank you for that statistic. Now, uh, other than more guns, uh, Judy, what other causes do you see of these issues, both the suicide and the homicide? I am seeing a trend of more issues generally, I think, with depression, with paranoia, with social discontent, because we are seeing the overall suicide rate going up. We are seeing the drug overdose rate going up. We have such an aura these days of antagonism and fighting and putting each other down instead of working together. We see a lot of installation of paranoia. When you get people terrified of something, the government's going to come and seize your guns or whatever it might be, it takes people away from thinking rationally. And I've seen a couple of friends of mine, very normally calm, rational people, and now they're, they're all on guard and all uptight and they're not thriving as well. And, and we're doing this across society. So I think all of this, this anger, this, this hatred, this hostility and paranoia is driving more people to be more sensitized to emotional pain. We also stigmatize emotional pain so that people feel reluctant to reach out and get help. You're not reluctant to get help if you have heart pain. But if your feelings, your emotions hurt, that other heart hurts, oh my goodness, well, if I talk about it, maybe I'd lose my job or I'd be looked down on or whatever. So then you don't reach for care, and even if you did try to reach for hair care, it might be hard to get it. Yeah, exactly. Now, Larry, uh, before I ask you to respond to what they've said, uh, tell that viewer what the Gun Owners of America is and what you guys are doing, and then um, uh, tell us if you have any information yourself on what you think is causing this increase in gun violence. Well, Gun Owners of America has been operating for some 40 years in defense of the Second Amendment and opposition to primarily at the